神秘を解き明かす。As I discussed in a previous video, it can help prevent an orchestral workflow from getting bogged down in details if we start by writing in a score editor before getting into a DAW with all of our nice VSTs. When we finish writing the basic musical material in our score editor, however, I recently discovered that there is an AI tool that can automate some of the process of translating the MIDI information to fit all the quirks and idiosyncrasies of our high end VST of choice. In this video, I'll be trying out the Note Performer playback engine for Spitfire Audio's BBC Symphony Orchestra and seeing if I can beat it with my manual mock up in Logic. Okay, let's start by defining our terms a little bit here. For those of you unfamiliar, Note Performer is an AI playback solution for score editors such as Dorico. What's interesting about it, as well as its main competitor in MuseScore, MuseSounds, is that instead of only reading in MIDI information one note at a time, it takes in information from the score editor to get the context of actual bars and musical phrases. As a result, you'll actually hear a difference, for example, when you add a slur to a phrase in your song. Now, this is all well and good, and the sounds in Note Performer already give us a fairly good snapshot of what our composition will sound like when played by live players. But here's the interesting part. At a certain point, Note Performer decided that they are not in the business of sampling musicians and making super realistic orchestral libraries. Rather, they're in the business of generating MIDI information for playback based on score input. So, in that spirit, instead of making their own hyper realistic, deep sampled sound library, they made playback templates that essentially make your score editor play nice with existing professional orchestral libraries. They currently have templates available for purchase that integrate with BBC Symphony Orchestra, Cinematic Studios, and several others. Today, we'll be looking at their template for BBC SO, which, full disclosure, they gave me for free as a sponsor for this video. They do have a free trial available. It just limits your session to one hour and disables audio exports. In order to run the template, you'll need to purchase BBC SO separately, and you'll need a high performance computer. Have a look at their system requirements, and in case it's helpful, here are the specs of the Mac Studio I'm currently running it on with no issues. Now let's load it up on a recent orchestral arrangement I made of an Yvette Young song, which you can check out in full here. Okay, so I have my arrangement open here. I'm going to mute the guitar and the vocals so we can just focus on the orchestral mock up. I currently have it set up to use Note Performer, and it's using the Note Performer sounds. <laughs> Totally usable in their own right. All we do is we go to No Performer Playback Engines and now add instruments. And now we just select the instruments that we want No Performer to swap out with BBC SO. So I'm going to say select multiple. There's no contrabassoon, there's no bass flute, but there's everything else. So flute, piccolo, oboe, English horn, clarinet, bass clarinet. There's actually contrabass clarinet at one point and bassoon. Horn, trumpet, trombone, none of these low brass options except for tuba, glock, xylophone, marimba, bass drum, snare drum, suspended cymbal. Yeah, I think there's wood block. Let's do section strings. Okay, and then we just click add selected. This is probably the compute intensive task. I really liked that color coded loading bar there so that when it's green, we know that we are loading the winds. When it's red, we're loading brass. Purple is percussion, etc., etc. Really nice touch. It's just loading each of the instruments in the background now. That took maybe two or three minutes to load up. Um, and now we have all the instruments loaded up. Um, in the background, like I said, these are probably separate instances of BBC SO. We can actually make quick changes to each of them. We can even bring up an actual graphical EQ if we want to make some corrections. Again, we're still not even in a DAW yet, and we can make some of these, these uh, changes and corrections. Okay, we know this pretty interface works. Let's see what it sounds like.
keep me in the lava moment. So super solid, right? So that whole mock-up process took about five minutes and it's easily 80% of the way there. So I already know that if I'm experimenting with this or that orchestral texture and I want a quick preview of how it's going to sound in BBCSO, I can use this tool to get that. The biggest dimension for improvement for the BBC playback engine, I would say, is making the dynamics more similar to the ones in the no performer samples. I selected all the dynamics based on the levels and dynamics I was hearing in the no performer samples, but when I switched to the BBC ones just now, the levels and dynamics were a little bit out of whack with what I had dialed in. Generally, they were a bit softer, especially the strings shorts, I would say, are softer. Now, one thing I'd note about that is that maybe some of the mix decisions were made based on a mix that has all of the instruments loaded in. In a setting like that, also, if you are doubling with, uh, with soloists, it makes sense to push everything lower. Okay, now for the main event. Let's talk about what I did in my version. So as opposed to the few minutes that the note performer mock-up took, mine took about 20 hours. About five hours for winds, five for brass, five for percussion, and five for strings. Though I will say that I was able to save a lot of time by using the MIDI exported from Dorico, which as I explain a bit in this short, has a lot of automation information baked into it. Let me know in the comments if you think I beat the AI or if I could have used all of that time playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth instead. And until next time, Jane.